Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is May 11th, 2019. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm going to provide you a brief update on the state of global sea ice. But before I do, I'd just like to call your attention to the present carbon dioxide readings as recorded by the Mauna Loa Observatory in Hawaii. And it appears that at present, global atmospheric CO2 levels are tracking toward peaking out near 414 parts per million in the monthly average for 2019. Now, this is an approximate two part per million, a little bit more than two part per million jump from previous uh, highs, annual highs during 2018. So we are continuing to see the overall longer term trend of significant atmospheric carbon dioxide rise, which is leading to a large part of the added heat forcing that is ongoing in the Earth's atmosphere and the Earth climate system as a whole. These atmospheric carbon dioxide levels are likely higher than any time in at least the past 13 million years. So we are pushing the climate regime really hard right now. And, and this is as a result primarily of fossil fuel burning. Now, there are a number of other greenhouse gases as well including methane, which is the uh, number two contributor to the added heat forcing that we are seeing. But the reason why climate carbon dioxide is so critical to the climate system is number one, due to the fact that it is responsible, responsible for the largest portion of the, of the forcing of the greenhouse gas forcing that, that we are seeing now and that it has a very long residency time lasts in the atmosphere for, for the effects last for at least 500 years. So moving on to global temperatures, it's worth noting that global temperatures hit around 1.3 degrees Celsius above 1880s averages during March of 2019, and that these levels are, are near record ranges, near record warm ranges, not, not quite into uh, new record highs for the month of March, probably in the range of about the third warmest on record, according to the NASA monitor. But because of the combined influence of rising greenhouse gases and a natural variability cycle called the El Nino, La Nina, uh, cycle, the Earth system is tipping more right now into the warm phase of natural variability. And combined with the effect of the very high greenhouse gases that we have in the atmosphere right now, we are pushing the global climate system to challenge new record highs for months in 2019 and potentially a, a challenge to 2016 record highs for the global system during 2019 as well. Now, what we see from this global map is that most of the extreme, most of the most extreme temperature departures are occurring in the polar regions of the Earth. So the Arctic is experiencing more abnormally warm temperatures, and the Antarctic is, for the most part, experiencing more abnormally warm temperatures as well. Looking at a backward history of the uh, global uh, GFS model, we also get some preliminary indicators that this record warmth in the polar zones continued into April as well. So, so very warm March and a very warm April in the polar zones. And as a result, what we're seeing is a lower than normal sea ice extent for the global system, near record low sea ice extent in the Arctic and record low sea ice extent in the Antarctic. And now we see these record low sea ice extents in the National uh, Snow and Ice Data Center interactive sea ice graph called that they've called Chartic. And so at present, our Antarctic sea ice extent is in the range of 7.898 million square kilometers which is about 200,000 square kilometers below the previous record lows for the date set in 2019. 
Now, if you flip over to the Arctic, we also see that Arctic sea ice extent is ranging rather below traditional baselines. And if you fill in the years, recent years where Arctic sea ice hit new record lows, we also find that Arctic sea ice is tracking in the range of near new record lows at just about 50,000 square kilometers, uh, 40 to 50,000 square kilometers above previous record lows set in 2016. What this means is that overall global sea ice extents now are in record low ranges. As you can see, if you zoom in on the red line here, the red line being the average global sea ice extent for 2019 versus previous years starting in 1978. This graph is produced by WIPNUS and is a compilation of global sea ice measures provided by the National Snow and Ice Data Center. So what we've seen is a period of time since late March through the present where global sea ice extents have been near record low or at record low ranges and, and hitting record low ranges from mid-April through the present, present in, a, in a very significant way and hitting near record low ranges ever since late March. So what we are seeing is that the warming global climate system is continuing to have a very deleterious effect on sea ice. We're seeing uh, sea ice hitting new historic record low ranges. And as you can see from this global measure, present sea ice values in the record low range are approximately one to one and a half million square kilometers below traditional global sea ice extents. So a, another historic mark driven by global warming and human forced climate change, which is primarily driven by fossil fuel burning. This is coming on the back of very warm temperatures, uh, warmer than normal temperatures in both the Antarctic and Arctic regions. And this, these warmer than normal temperatures in the Arctic and Antarctic regions are an aspect of what climate scientists call polar amplification, where the polar regions of the world warm faster than the middle and equatorial, middle latitude and equatorial regions due to various climate feedbacks. And we're seeing that now. And unfortunately, we will continue to see this effect so long as we continue to increase atmospheric greenhouse gases and, and don't really work to tackle the climate crisis. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.